Now that we've taken a look at what differential equations is, done a little bit of review of integration, we're ready to look at that relationship between integration and differential equations. The question we're going to answer today is how does integration, help solve differential equations. And some differential equations are nice and simple enough that we can solve them just by using integration. If y prime is equal to f of x or dy dx equals f of x. It's the same thing, right? Different notation. What I mean is that there are no y's on the left side. We can just integrate both sides. So for example, if I have the differential equation y prime is equal to 2x plus 3, because there's no y's on the other side, I'm just going to integrate both sides dx. And that's going to solve the differential equation for me. Because y prime is the derivative of y, so its antiderivative is just y. And the antiderivative of 2x plus 3 is x squared plus 3x plus a constant. And that then is the function that is the solution to my differential equation. Let's try one maybe that's a little bit more involved. Let's say y double prime is equal to x times the sine of x. Well, to get rid of a double prime, we're going to have to integrate twice. We can do this because there are no y's on the other side of the equation. So when I take the integral dx, the antiderivative of y double prime is just a single prime is equal to, let's take a look at that x sine of x to the side here. How do we integrate x sine of x dx? Well, it's a product, so that might make me think I'm going to do integration by parts, where u is equal to x and dv is sine of x dx. That's going to make du equal to just dx and v equal to the negative cosine of x. And so this is going to be equal to u times v, negative x cosine x, minus the integral of v du, which is a negative. Bring that out, cosine of x dx. And so I can integrate to get negative x cosine x plus the sine of x plus a constant. So that's going to be my solution, negative x cosine x plus the sine of x plus a constant. But we still haven't solved for y. We've solved for y prime. But the right side still only has x's on it, so we can integrate dx both sides Again, when we do that, the antiderivative of y prime is just y is equal to, oh, and now I'm integrating, very similar to last time, but this time is x cosine of x. So u is going to be x, dv is going to be the cosine of x dx. du then is still dx, and v is sine of x. So u times v is x sine x minus the integral of v du, which is the sine of x dx. And so that gives us x sine of x plus cosine x plus a constant. We'll worry about that plus a constant. Um, I'm going to actually call that constant 2 because that constant is different than the constant 1 we found on that blue line. So let's label them specifically. We'll cover that constant at the end here. Let's do this term by term. Distribute that negative through what we just found. We have negative x 
sine x minus the cosine of x. Then we have to take the antiderivative of sine x, which is a negative cosine x, plus the antiderivative of c1 is c1 times x. And then, of course, we need that plus a constant at the end, plus c2. Clean it up a little bit by combining the like terms in the middle. And y is equal to negative x sine x minus 2 cosine x plus c1 times x plus c2. And now I found the solution to my second ordered differential equation. So these are really nice and quick. It's just basically a review of integration. If the y prime is equal to some function of x that has no y's on the other side, and I probably should have said other side, not left side, because sometimes it's left, sometimes it's right. We've always done the right side in these examples. If there's no y's on the other side, we just have to integrate both sides to get to our solution. And that's going to be our first trick for solving differential equations. But I want to expand this idea of the derivative is equal to a function to talk about this idea called a slope field. A slope field is going to look at the slope for all possible combinations of x and y. In other words, if y prime is equal to some function of x and y, since y prime is the slope of the tangent line, the derivative of the function, then f of xy gives the slope at all points x comma y. So for example, if I've got the function y prime is equal to x minus y. Now this is an example of a function we could not solve by integrating both sides because there's a y on the other side. But we can make a chart that takes a look at different values for x and y. Let's say x is equal to negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then for y, we can pick a couple values similarly, maybe the same ones, negative 2, one, uh, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And let's make a little grid here. And remember, we're dealing with the function y equals x minus y. So I'm going to take the x value and subtract the y value. So negative, going across the first row where x is negative 2, negative 2 minus a negative 2 is going to be 0. Negative 2 minus negative 1 is going to be negative 1. Negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Working down the second row, negative 1 minus a negative 2 is 1. Negative 1 minus negative 1 is 0. And you kind of start to see the pattern. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. The third row, 0 minus a negative 2 is 2. And then 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. 1 minus negative 2 is 3. And then 2, 1, 0, 1. And 2 minus negative 2 is 4. And then 3. 2, 1, and 0. And we could keep doing this for all different combinations of x and y to figure out what our solution y prime is equal to. All these blue numbers in the center represent y prime, or the derivative of y, or the slope of the tangent line at that point. So if I put this all together and I make a grid, we should be able to graph all of these different slopes that we just found. And what we do on this slope field is we just draw a small little line at the point that represents the slope. 
So when x is negative 2 and y is negative 2, that's the point, negative 2 comma negative 2, we have a slope of 0. So I'll draw a little line with a slope of 0 at the point negative 2, negative 2. When x is negative 2 and y is negative 1, the slope is negative 1. So I'll draw a slope of negative 1, which would be a nice 45 degree angle. Then when y is 0, the slope is negative 2, so it's a steeper slope. It's probably a little too steep. When y is 1, it's a negative 3 slope, so that's even a steeper slope. And when y is 2, it's a 4 slope. That's almost a vertical slope. And so you can kind of see how the slope is changing as we go up. When x is negative 1 and y is negative 2, it says the slope is positive 1. So I draw a little line with positive 1 slope. At negative 1, negative 1, the slope is 0. At negative 1, 0, the slope is negative 1. Then the slope is negative 2. And finally, the slope is negative 3. So you can kind of get a view of how those slopes are shifting. Going across the x equals 0 row, when x is 0 and y is negative 2, we have a positive 2 slope. So it's a bit steeper. Then we have the positive 1 slope. Then we have a 0 slope, negative 1 slope, and negative 2 slope. Going down the row of 1, when x is equal to 1, it starts with a slope of 3, 2, 1, 0, and negative 1. And then if I go out to 2, we start with a slope of 4, which is almost vertical, slope of 3, slope of 2, slope of 1, and finally a slope of 0. And this gives us what is called the slope field. This slope field tells us kind of directionally where the graph is going to go given any initial value. So if I have an initial value of maybe right here, you see it's going to start with a real steep slope. Then the slopes kind of level out and then kind of come up. And we end up with this solution curve here given an initial value. If I have an initial value that starts down here, it starts out nearly flat and then just goes up. If I have a solution over here, you'll see we've got steeper slopes going up that way. And so we can see different solution curves using the graph going left to right. How is this graph going to bend as it goes across the picture? Now, these are a pain to make by hand. However, normally, technology helps. And so if you go on to Google and search for slope field, You'll get a lot of options that make slope fields for you using the technology. I always put the word GeoGebra at the end, slope field GeoGebra. And that's going to give me a way to investigate the slope field that we just looked at, y prime equals x minus y. And we're also going to look at a second one for fun of x times y. Let's go over to GeoGebra now. GeoGebra gives me this slope field calculator that generates a slope field and also an initial point. So I can go in here and program it. We were working with the function x minus y. And I can grab this point and move this initial point around. And you can see how that initial point bends with the curve as it changes. And it kind of makes that same shape that we just experimented with earlier. You could even put a different function in there. We looked at x, y I wrote down. x, y is kind of interesting. If I grab that initial point and drag it around, you can see how those slopes shift based on the slope field on the graph. For this course, you're not going to be asked to make a slope field. But if you're given a slope field like this one, 
and I give you an initial point, you should be able to trace out approximately how the curve moves through the slope field. So take a look at the GeoGebra slope field calculator and play with it a bit. Also, the homework assignment has a couple slope field problems on it for you to practice with, and also doing some of the integrals as solutions to differential equations. So take a look at all that practice. Let me know if you have questions, and we'll see you in class.